Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The old Chinese hospital is often believed to be the most haunted structure in Singapore. A host of ghosts are purported to roam its abandoned wards. The structures, which would later become the hospital, opened in 1935 as barracks for the British Royal Air Force. Several buildings would also become part of the Kitchener barracks. The Japanese took over the facility during their occupation from 1942 to 1945. The Kitchener barracks was then used as a military hospital and a prison camp. The English re-established themselves and the complex was decommissioned. In 1947, it became the Rayef Chayani Hospital. The RAF left in 1971 and the hospital passed through a series of identities and eventually merged with nearby Chani Chalet Hospital. The hospital was also used as a torture facility for the secret police during World War II. This brings in a legion of legends and rumors, including the legend of the torture room. This secret place is reported to have chains on the walls, blood stains everywhere, and other evidence of torture. Legends also says there's an underground tunnel system that saw its share of heinous tortures. After the war, Chani operated as a standard hospital until it closed in 1997. It's believed to be haunted by victims of the occupation, former patients from the hospital days, as well as homeless people who died on premises. Rumors of paranormal activity in the abandoned facility became persistent and grew in popularity. It became common knowledge in the 2000s. Most of the activity is believed to have originated when the facility was a prison camp. Haunted Chayani was a 2010 mockumentary about the hospital and what happened when a group of paranormal experts attempt to investigate. The movie was filmed on location. The most common paranormal events reported are phantom screams, ghostly soldiers, and a translucent nurse who carries a young boy. We took to the internet to find the most interesting stories of personal experiences at Old Chani. In my early 20s, I was very interested in ghost hunting, especially with all the new ghost hunting shows on TV. During this period, I visited Singapore to meet my long-distance girlfriend and a couple of friends. We all shared an interest in the paranormal. They told me an interesting story about the Old Chani Hospital, how it was a major prison camp. I mean, come on. There didn't seem to be a better location where we may experience a spirit than this. There were three of us, including my girlfriend, and we all agreed to do this. We didn't have any real equipment, so it was all very amateur. At about 10 p.m., we made our way. When we reach our destination, the scene leading up to the hospital is already very creepy. I asked questions and recorded with my phone as we explored. Nothing happened until we reached the third floor. Then I heard a pop on the wall. I jumped and turned to look around and just started for the door where my friend was. I walked fast and after my third step, pop, 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 continuously on the walls around me, like bullets hitting the walls and floor. I bolted as fast as I could, pushed the door and nearly pushed my friend over as I ran past him. I yelled, run! He ran behind me and kept up. I didn't stop until we reached the bottom. Once I reached my girlfriend, I stopped and caught my breath. I proceeded to play the recording I had on my phone. Strangely enough, all I got was static. From start to beginning, you couldn't hear my questions. You couldn't even hear me scream run, which it should have caught because I didn't think to stop recording until I reached the bottom of that pitch dark hill. What you could hear was towards the end where suddenly the static disappears, almost as if it only started recording the moment we got out of the hospital's main gate. It was quite the experience for me, and since then, I have become a full believer. I know a dude in Singapore who went to the hospital. He found a pair of glasses in one of the rooms and took them home as a souvenir. He said after he took them home, he heard what sounded like scratching at the bottom of his door every night for four nights straight. He brought the glasses back to the hospital and put them in that room, and the scratching stopped after that. This story is from someone in a group that filmed a documentary inside the old hospital. We got spooked while filming at the old Chani Hospital. We captured many things on camera. There were dark figures and shadows in our footage. I reviewed some of the video footage yesterday and there are definitely weird things in the shots, in particular unusual shadows. I had a very scary encounter with our cameraman that I will never forget. It was somebody or something. We left old Chani Hospital right after that. 
I'm never going back there again. Ever. One of our crew members has been sick ever since that night's shoot. I've been feeling sort of ill lately too. A guy was out with his friends and their girlfriends celebrating a birthday at Chasnay Chalet. They drove there and bought beers, food, and music. After a few hours of partying, at about 12.30 a.m., the guys suggested going to the old Cha Nay hospital for fun. The girls grew afraid and tried persuading them to go home but they were insistent. So they drove there. And when they reached the gates, they parked their cars and looked at the place. What happened in the next two minutes shocked the hell out of all of them. You see, old Cha Nay hospital was a deserted building and no one guarded the place. At that time, they stood and peered up at the tall white dirty building when suddenly an old man rushed in, grabbed the gate and said, don't disturb us. Young people, upon saying the word us, the old man pointed towards the building and the group all saw countless white figures glaring down at them. They ran like mad and left their cars there to the nearest bright place. Two of the guys went mad and had to be sent to asylum. The rest became very withdrawn after the incident. One of the girls committed suicide because she couldn't forget what she saw. We went to visit Cha Ne because we were curious. When we arrived and stood in the Cha Ne front driveway, one of the guys said he saw a lot of dark shadows crowding in every level's corridor looking down at us. He couldn't see their faces, but the corridors were filled with them. We walked past the bridge that connected the old commando barracks to old Cha Ne Hospital. He told us a lady with long hair and a sinister black aura followed us around when we were there. And even now, he refuses to describe what the lady looked like. He just said, it was so horrible I wouldn't want to hear. This happened in mid-2007. My friends and I decided to explore old Cha Ne Hospital. It was at night and we brought our flashlights. We went in even numbers as people said that if we went in odd numbers, something bad would happen. As my partner and I passed the elevator, we heard a ting sound and the doors opened. We stared at each other in shock. How was it even possible the elevator would be working when the place was so run down and the electricity was off? We decided to go further. When we passed the wards, we heard voices of people in pain. We kept walking because we thought it was our imagination. Soon we walked down the stairs and my partner's face went pale as if he was going to faint. I asked him if he was okay. He didn't answer. All he said was, faster. We left. He called me the next day and said when we were at the staircase, he saw a little boy with pale bluish skin sitting at the corner staring at him. Until this day, we never returned to Old Chani. My colleague went to the Old Chani hospital with her boyfriend and his friends. This was during the seventh month they walked towards a bench when one of the friends decided to take out his phone to film them. He hoped to capture an image of a ghost. They approached the bench, where my friend sat down with her boyfriend. They all played around and joked, saying there weren't any ghosts. Then the friend noticed that although he couldn't see anything behind them, when he looked at his phone, which was still recording, he clearly saw a figure with shoulder-length hair in a long-sleeved white dress. He couldn't see the face. He was scared stiff and went silent. When they asked if he saw a ghost and how come his face was white, he just told them over and over he didn't feel well and that they should go back. My friend then said, scared of what? There's nothing here. It was then they heard a loud shrieking, followed by laughter behind them. Needless to say, they ran away after that. There were always rumors going around in the hospital. Something was inside the building. There were always complaints from patients that they were disturbed in the middle of the night. There was knocking loud enough to wake them up and some reported they were pinched when nothing was there. After some checking out, it seemed that all those cases were related. All the complainants had been placed inside one particular ward. It seemed harmless, but over time, the complaints grew wilder. Soon the administration had no choice but to close the ward. However, one doctor volunteered to spend the night in the ward. What happened made his skin crawl. He was seated in bed. The lights were brightly lit. He read a book he bought to keep him company. It neared nine o'clock. He yawned and something seemed to move in the corner of his eye. He whipped over expecting to see something interesting, but there was nothing. At 9.30, the ward's light turned down. The doctor switched on his personal lamp and continued to read his book. 
At 10, the doctor had enough of his book and decided to go to sleep. He left the light on as he fell asleep. A slight rattling woke him at 10.30. He stared at the source of the sound. It seemed to have come from his left side, where the chair was. He also found part of his arm seemed slightly pinched. He made a mental note and returned to sleep. Something else woke him at 10.50. He assumed the reading light disturbed his rest. He reached out and switched off the light before retiring. He awoke with a start at 11.10. A bad feeling churned in his gut. Something was not right. The chair, which had been to his left, was now directly in front of the bed. In the moonlight, he saw a black shape sitting in the chair. That jolted him awake. Now fully conscious, he realized someone or something mumbled. He turned around to his left, where the chair had been. He saw several dark figures staring at him. Unlike the one in the chair, these figures had red bloodshot eyes. He also saw more and more of these figures climbing out of the painting on the wall. He screamed, but the spirits just stared back at him. He fainted. After that incident, the ward was sealed, and a priest was engaged to remove the painting on the wall. Soon after the painting was removed, it seemed that everything was all right. One time I went to Old Chani Hospital. It was my first time there. I saw nothing. The same with my next two visits. During my fourth visit, I visited with my boyfriend and some friends. On the second or third level where the dark room was, I saw someone watching us. I looked back and saw a man in his late twenties, and then he hid. I kept quiet until at the fourth floor. My friends went to the roof and I called them to get out of Old Shawnee. They asked why, I told them what I saw. Then they thought that there was no ghost, but I knew there was. I was okay, but when it got dark I had trouble. I felt giddy to be out of there, so I rested on a bench. My friends then said they wanted to go to another place. I stood, but my legs were so weak I had to hold on to two people to walk. Then the bad luck came. Everything is bad luck. They say the ghost that I saw followed me. Even now, I still have bad luck. Maybe the ghost is still following me. My story happened during the Hungry Ghost Festival. My friend H decided to visit the old Chani hospital. All of us agreed. We went home to get flashlights and any other needed items, and we met back up. The four of us took a bus and reached it about 5.15 PM. Although it was in the early evening, the old hospital looked spooky. Some parts seemed even darker, but luckily we brought our lights. One of my friends wanted to see the pentagram room, but we couldn't find it. We roamed for about an hour, but saw nothing. He decided to go to the roof. We followed. The weather was fine as we climbed the stairs to the roof. The spooky part started when we reached the roof. It suddenly began pouring rain. Even though there hadn't been any indication of a storm, we dashed down the stairs and got out of that place because I sensed something wasn't right. The rain stopped as soon as we reached the ground floor. The air smelled like medicine. We all kept quiet and quickly boarded a bus back home. We spoke on the bus, one by one, and discussed our individual experiences. One of my friends saw a doorknob turning itself as if someone was trying to come out of a room. It was when the scent of medicine appeared. We still don't know why it rained so heavily when we were on the roof, and stopped so suddenly when we left the building. I was not a timid person. I've been to the hospital quite a few times, and even visited the mortuary. My story was during a visit with around nine friends. We went to the main building on the hill. We saw another group of teenagers like us. We ignored them and went our separate ways. On our way up the staircase, we saw many Chinese amulets covering the floor. It was just when we reached the second floor, we heard a loud crashing of glass and all sorts of noise from the other end, followed by loud crying. We believe it was done by the other group. We were scared and ran all the way out of the building. We figured the people inside must have been possessed and went crazy. The police were also involved, but we never knew what happened to the group or why they behaved like that. This is a true story. There was a toy all living at the old Chani hospital. A toy all is a demon infant that is believed to have died prior to birth. The toy all will appear in the night, not in the day. So my friends and I went to the hospital to see if the story was true. We went there on Thursday night when it was cold. The wind was strong. We reached the hospital at nine, so we went to the main entrance, which was very dark. When we got inside, we saw a lot of blood all over the place. There were also people drawing and spraying on the wall. Some of the drawings were a face of devil or toy all. Then our hair raised. All of us were scared, so we walked and walked. Suddenly, there was a small green boy, which was a toy all. So we watched quietly from afar. It played with a stone and threw it at the wall. It was getting late, 
So some in our group said that they wanted to go home, but I wanted to see what it was doing. So my friends went home. One of my friends named Muhammad still wanted to follow, so we watched what the toy all was doing. Suddenly the spirit walked away. Muhammad and I followed the toy all. It went to one of the rooms and it was very cold. It had a pleasant smell. So we got in and checked it out, but suddenly the toy all disappeared and we got lost. My friends and I were scared, but we did not know what to do. So we slept there overnight. The next morning, we were just outside of the main entrance. We were shocked and we ran home. We celebrated my birthday at Shockney Chalet. My friends and I decided to go on an adventure to look for ghosts at Old Cheney Hospital. It was about 1 a.m. when we got there. There were seven of us. My girlfriend and I were a bit scared. It was dark when we went in, but luckily one of us brought a flashlight. After wandering around, we reached the third floor. My girlfriend and my friend's girlfriend stepped on long hair, as if someone laid on the floor, but there was nothing there. We passed a room once used by the Singapore Army. When I caught a glimpse of a white figure just beside me, I pretended not to see it, but I had goosebumps all over my body. We kept quiet for the rest of our journey. When we got back to the chalet, we all shared our stories. One of my friends said that he saw a fan spinning unusually fast in one of the rooms. The strangest thing was that there was no electricity as the hospital. Another friend saw a white figure standing near the staircase on the second story. My friends and I decided to go to the old Chani hospital as we heard that it was haunted. We went to the hospital equipped with flashlights and some holy stuff. We climbed a steep slope to enter the hospital. It looked so spooky from the outside. We entered. The place looked very old. We patrolled the first floor and then proceeded to the second floor. At the third floor, we heard a girl and a boy shouting. We saw no one and became scared. When we walked past a room, the door just slammed shut. It freaked me out. We also heard medication trolleys being pushed. We saw a lot of rooms with the pentagram drawings. We proceeded to the fourth floor even though we were scared. Suddenly, my friend said, hey, I heard someone walking. We thought it was the security guard, so we dashed out of the place. I was kind of sad as there was one more floor to explore. After we got out, my other friend told me he saw a cloudy figure staring at us from on top the fourth floor, so we are going back there. My story is more of an experience. A few years ago, my team and I went there in search of proof that the old Cheney Hospital was really haunted. Our team now consists of three members. The rest quit for obvious reasons. We carried a night vision camera, sound recorder, and a standard issue camera. We entered the hospital and passed the guards table. We went to the morgue first. Once we were down there, we smelled a very strong odor of blood. We knew straight away an entity or multiple entities were present. We scanned the area with our video camera and took some photos and moved on. We then went upstairs to the second story. We recorded many strange sounds, sounds of trolley being pushed and moaning. We later confirmed that we were the only ones there. As usual, we took videos and pictures of the area and moved on. We then stumbled into the surgical theater. The smell of blood hit us again, but less pungent as in the morgue. Next, we went to the last story. Most of the activity happened there. We saw small flashes of light and heard people talking. The next thing caused us to quickly exit the hospital. One of our members suddenly felt very cold when the rest of us were sweating. Suddenly, an invisible force brushed against him. It caused him to fall. He dropped his camera too. Next thing we did was to quickly return to my friend's car and drive to the village. Later, we developed the photos and reviewed them. We also listened to the recordings and reviewed the video footage. We managed to capture orbs and flashes of light on the photos. What astonished us is that in the morgue, we captured a huge amount of ectoplasm flowing from the trays, and this stunned us a little. The video camera revealed little more except for a few orbs and shadows. What really frightened us was the audio recordings. We captured many sounds, sounds of people talking, moaning, even faint screaming. We also recorded the sound of moving trolleys. After that experience, our group split. My friend destroyed his video and photos because he wanted to forget the whole incident. All that's left is the tape we recorded. So my conclusion is that Old Chani Hospital is a very haunted place. The rumors are true as we experienced it ourselves. We don't recommend anyone go there out of curiosity or for some cheap thrills because the spirits that haunt the place are quite strong. I admit that I was a skeptic most of my life. I didn't believe in ghosts, but one incident changed my mind. It happened like this. 
My mom was sick, so I accompanied her to the hospital. She went through chemotherapy every week at the old Chatney Hospital when it was in operation. I usually woke around 7 to get her prepared for the hospital visit. I usually washed laundry and prepared mom's breakfast before we went to the hospital. We usually reached the hospital around 8, so I waited for her treatment. It usually took two hours. One day, I waited in the waiting room for mom to finish her treatment. I heard footsteps coming towards me. I wasn't shocked because it was eight in the morning. I didn't believe in ghosts. But as I turned and looked, I saw mom walking towards me. I stood up and tried to hold her hand, but my mom wasn't really my mom. It was something that looked like my mom, but wasn't. I was shocked and entered the therapy room, but mom was still in therapy. So I exited the room, but the figure wasn't there. A short time later, a nurse approached me to say that my mom had just died because the radiation was too powerful. I thought to myself that the mom was perhaps mom's spirit saying her last goodbye. I was devastated by the tragedy and started believing in the unknown. A security guard worked at the old Cheney Hospital for many years, and some say never left. My dad worked at the hospital before it closed. I often visited him there. I still remember the old security guard who worked there. Months before the hospital moved, Dad and I spoke with that guard. Eventually, they discussed the hospital's relocation. The guard said things like, I'm very sad. Once the hospital moves, I will be out of a job. I really can't bear to leave this place. Recently, I went with a group of friends to visit the Chesney. Things were smooth as we explored the first and second levels. There were 16 of us, and we had two flashlights. Things went wrong when we got to the third level. We explored and found nothing, so we decided to leave. Our lights were getting weak, and one went out. We went round and round for 15 minutes, but still couldn't find the exit. Some girls in the group started to panic. To our amazement, a guard came up the stairs but didn't have any light. It was dark, and we couldn't see him clearly. I was among the last few to go down the stairs. As we reached the ground floor, the girls in the front shouted and ran away. We were in the back, so we didn't know what happened. But for safety, we ran as well. We ran to the bus stop down the hill. The girls stated that when we reached the ground floor, they saw the security guard had no legs, only shoes attached to the pants. I casually asked my dad about the old security guard, and he said he died. I was shocked, and even now, still wonder if he was the one who saved us. Many others have reported meeting the security guard too. I decided to get my friends together to visit the old Chatney Hospital. There were nine of us. I was anxious because it was my first time going to such creepy place. We arrived at around nine that evening. Well, here is what happened during our trip. The first sight of the hospital is going to scare anybody. When I first laid eyes on it, I felt like the hospital dared us to go in. We made our way up the long staircase. During that time, I had second thoughts. Furthermore, we only carried candles because none of us brought flashlights. I wondered how we would survive the place with such minimal light. But I kept my feelings to myself because I didn't want to let my friends down. I'm not going to describe how the place looks because visuals are better than words. You gotta check the place out. Anyways, I'm going to list some of the things we encountered during the trip. Nevertheless, I thank God I didn't see the face of any of those things. I'm not going to discuss what happened in every place because it would take forever to type. Here are some of the encounters. Heard children talking and crying. Heard laughter on top of the trees. Rattling sound on the ceiling. Stale coldness. Banging of the door behind us after we had entered the room long time ago. There was no gust of wind at all. Figure of a head on the piece of glass found on some of the doors. Clapping from the building when we were outside. One of us saw flickering lights and dats when we decided to leave the main building. There is no power supply. I'm sure there are more encounters, but I can't think of it. To all daredevils who have not been there, maybe it's time for you to go. Just remember, they may seem to be sleeping, but they are not. They are watching your every move. Your my friends and I had a terrible experience which completely changed my life. My best friend, A, had been quiet for the whole school day. After much persuasion, she finally spoke up. She told me about her visit with her other friends to Old Cheney Hospital. The old hospital has been abandoned for many years. She told me that she does not want to enter that horrid place again. I asked her why, but she continued giving me the same answer. I then asked my other friends to take me to the place where they had been the other day. Of course I was not prepared for anything. I remember there were 16 of us. We walked in pairs. A did not come along. 
Once we entered the gate, it felt the creepy, but I hid it. We passed the mortuary. It was wet and it stinks. We weren't allowed to enter the hospital without a valid reason and permission from the caretaker. The caretaker's desk was in the middle of the hospital. He glared at us when he saw us. What are you here for? He asked sternly. We are here to do a project, sir. One of the security guards said, You may enter, but please don't break anything, or else they may get angry. Of course we were puzzled by his words, but it didn't bother us. We entered the hospital through the back. The laundry room was wet. We explored the building. My partner and I came across a room. We didn't realize it was an operation room until we were in the middle of the room. No other guys or gals. I then caught a glimpse of a young girl weeping at a corner of the room. She called out to someone to rescue her from something. I could not hear her clearly, but she spoke Malay. I believe the English translation would be, I don't want... Mother? Don't mother? I don't want to die, mother. The spirit said she didn't want to do something, and she didn't want to die. I stepped forward and reached for her small palm. My friend kept saying, are you out of your mind? Let's get out of here. The closer I got to that little girl, the more secure I felt. I felt sleepy and as if I was in a dream. The spirit suddenly ran to me and hugged me as if I was her long lost sister. She told me her stepmother forced her to undergo appendicitis surgery. Her stepmother knew there was nothing wrong with her, but insisted on surgery. Her stepmother wanted to inherit her insurance money and desperately wanted her to be killed. She begged me to believe her and of course I did. It happened right in front of my eyes. The girl then turned around and returned to the corner where she was before. She looked at us with a satisfied smile and disappeared. <laughs> we went home with mixed feelings. We were happy that the little girl was satisfied, but we were also terrified for ourselves. The next day, A asked me if I saw the little girl in the operating theater. I told her the little girl was happy now, that she just needs someone kind enough to listen to her. Whatever she tells you, please believe it, because you don't know what's going to happen if you doubt her. As for the stepmother, she was buried alive. She was buried by that little girl herself. If you wish to see her, visit that little room and stare into every corner. We were in a group of six people at Old Chani. We walked up the stairs and onto our expedition. The first stop was the mortuary. The area reeked of blood and the appalling stench of dead bodies. The mortuary door was obstructed, so we couldn't get in. We decided not to even try to enter the mortuary. We split into clusters of two people, so there were three groups. We set off to explore. I shined my flashlight in every nook and corner. I hoped to catch something but to no avail. There was nothing. We were disappointed. Afterward, we met back at the bus stop opposite the hospital. We decided to share what we encountered during the expedition. One person told me that they encountered some doctors performing an autopsy in the autopsy room, but their faces were dark. They refused to get any closer. The other group said they stumbled upon a dark figure at the end of the corridor. They got nearer, but the figure vanished. I was disappointed I didn't encounter anything except for that stench. It was my best friend's birthday. I don't remember what bus we took to go to the old Chani hospital. By that time, it was night. One friend suggested we go to the old hospital for a visit. At first my best friend and I disagreed because we thought it wasn't right to disturb the things there. They said we were chicken. So we had to put up with it and go along. The stairs seemed to be endless. We were breathless by the time we reached the entrance. We had four boys in front of and behind us as a kind of protection. It sounds kind of stupid now. Anyways we went in and saw a satanic sign on the floor. Things then turned weird. The air was so cold all of a sudden. I was scared already but had no choice other than to go along. Then I started to hear people cry. It sounded very spooky. I was terrified by that point. But didn't tell my friends until we were going leaving. One of the guys. His family are mediums. Also looked weird because I think he heard what I heard. I told the boys to go down first because I had something to tell them. At first. They were angry with me. But when they saw my expression they knew something was wrong. So they went down. We reached the first floor. And I told them not to go up anymore. At first. They didn't believe me. Then one of the boys I mentioned said I spoke the truth. He heard it. Two. They ignored what I said and returned to the building once they left me and my best friend at the bus stop. The boys said if anything was wrong to just call them. All of them carry handphones. They went up. But things started to go wrong. We waited for them. Behind us was a camp but no one lived there. My friend and I was so scared. Suddenly. We heard female laughing so loud that we had to hold our ears. We panicked but forced ourselves to act like nothing happened or that thing might come for us. I had a phone. So I called my friends. But none of them picked up the phone. About 15 minutes later. The boys came down. We asked them to go home and on the way. We got things to tell them. As we were all in the bus already. 
We started to scold the boys why they never picked up the phone. They said none of their handphones ever rang. Both my best friend and I were shocked. We told them what we heard. By then, we were all so scared and I swear I will not go there again. I'm a skateboarder. So when I heard about the old Chani hospital, I wanted to go with my friends and skate there. There were five of us all together, including myself. We arrived and were scared before we even entered the hospital. The air was thick with the chemical smell of medicine. There was also cold drafts, even when the wind wasn't working. We all kept quiet and pressed onward. One room was marked off with red and white tape, so we ignored it. We decided to go to the roof and see the graffiti. One of my friends decided to use the elevator, and to our surprise, it still worked. We pressed the button, and the doors began closing, and the same red and white tape whipped across outside the elevator's doors. We shouted with fear, but the elevator moved. We then chose the last floor and pressed the button. When we were on the roof, we saw one of the ward's doors repeatedly open and close. We still kept quiet. The graffiti was colorful, and we rested a while. We came back down around an hour later by the staircase. The temperature again dropped as we descended. We reached the first floor and found all the red and white tape we'd seen earlier was gone. We looked inside the room that had been marked off earlier to find a lady in a wheelchair. She faced the window and had our back to us. We didn't draw her attention, just quickly left. I involuntarily glanced behind as we moved towards the entrance and saw the lady in the wheelchair following us. I didn't say anything until we were well outside. I swear to God I won't go to that hospital again. One Saturday evening, four of my friends and I walked past the old Cheney Hospital. I remembered it was about 7.10 p.m. that day. One of my classmates booked a chalet. My friends and I decided to go for a walk for some fresh air. We talked and made so much noise. We didn't realize we were passing the old hospital. At first, my friend, S, told us not to pass as it would be eerie. The rest of us assumed there was no way it could harm us just because we passed outside. Ultimately, we decided to pass it and ignore the building. We sang the children's song, Ba Ba Black Sheep, loudly because we were getting bored walking. We eventually grew tired of singing and just remained silent for a while. Suddenly, we heard a girl's voice, a sweet one, singing the song we had just sung. We looked at each other. We all wondered if someone was making fun of us. But when I look at each one of them, they seems just as shocked. What made us shiver is when we turned around and looked at the staircase. We saw a little girl wearing white gown with blood stains. She carried a cute teddy bear and walked towards us. She also started singing again. We were so frightened as we ran to the Shelley like mad dogs. My friend's mother said, there were rumors at the old hospital of a girl who died from falling down the staircase. She visited her ill mother. The incident happened after her father had committed suicide. I first didn't believe what I saw, but many travelers have also reported seeing her. Before we end this episode, there are several fascinating items to examine. These have been making the rounds online and continue to puzzle and mystify. Does this prove the old Chinny Hospital is haunted, or are they simple flukes caught at just the right time? The first photograph is of a young man in an open hallway. The picture seems entirely normal, but an anomaly in the lower left corner might not be so normal. Do you think this is a simple aberration in the photograph, or do you agree with the side that believes it's the spirit of a World War II nurse carrying a baby? This next photograph is again supposedly that of an old nurse with a baby. What do you think this is? This is a combination of two photographs taken in sequence. One picture shows a figure in the window, but the other does not. Is this paranormal or just a case of matrixing? Matrixing is a process where we see facial elements in inanimate objects. This last one is a recording purported to be paranormal activity. What do you think it is? Leave your answers in the comments. This is just a reminder to subscribe to enjoy our growing collection of paranormal content. Don't forget to like your favorite episode and ring the bell to be notified of new content. As always, thanks for watching.